Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we have Carmina with us today. Thank you very much for joining us here in Exotic Astrology. This is the first time we are seeing you. I mean, we already did a video, but I've not uploaded that yet because first I wanted that everybody should know who she is, and she also has a beautiful YouTube channel. I keep seeing her videos sometimes, although there are not many videos. It's a new channel, so whoever is watching this. Uh, please go and subscribe to her channel you will see the channel in the link of this uh, i mean the channel link in the description of this video below and you also do consultations yes of course i do consultations i use astrology cards and lately human design and uh, that's what i wanted to talk to you about today yeah. human design <laughs> yeah we'll i don't talking on human design and so many other things she will also go with example charts so mm -hmm. I'm amazed to see what's there. So please take it over. <laughs> thank you, Babajit. First of all, thank you for having me on your channel. And uh, hello to your viewers. And uh, I just wanted to say that human design is a system that combines astrology, I Ching, and other techniques. It's a system that was developed in the 80s by a person called Ra Uruhu. This person was an atheist, but he received uh, at some point some download of knowledge and he just uh, came up with this system, but it took him decades to, you know, to make it very more defined because it was too much information for him and he didn't know how to sort it out. So he needed the help of some astrologers and other more knowledgeable people. And this is a system that is continuously evolving, so it's not something fixed, but it's also based on astrology and teaching, as I will show in the following examples. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. I'm just going to show like a few elements of human design. I'm just going to say that um, in my consultations, I mainly use astrology and the cards, and the human design is just like a supplement especially to know about uh, someone's personality and about compatibility is very useful. So this is like a basic human design chart. We see here the nine centers and these centers have in them some gates and these gates can be connected into channels. If two gates are connected, then a channel is formed. So there's uh, there is a theme in the person's chart. We can look for themes, for patterns, so the nine centers uh, that we work with in human design are the head, which uh, relates to inspiration, to receiving the knowledge directly from the divine source. If you have active gates here, uh, you're a very you're a person who receives kind of blocks of information out of thin air, as you would say. And then we have the Ajna center, which is the awareness center, and of it helps us uh, rationalize and conceptualize things. So the inspiration that we get, if we have it connected to the Ajna, then we can uh, rationalize what we receive. And then we have the throat center, uh, which is uh, very important for willpower and for communication of these ideas. If you have this uh, Ajna center connected to the throat, you can better communicate your ideas. Then we have the so-called G-Center or Identity Center. And um, we also have the, the Heart Center, the Solar Plexus, the Sacral, the Spleen, and the Root. And if you see in a human design chart that the center is colored, it means it's defined. So it means that the person uh, works with that type of energy consistently. If the center is not colored, then it means that it's not defined, so the person can take in, can absorb outer influences and not really be necessarily consistent with that center. It can, I don't know, work with it as a compensation. It can exaggerate with it. For instance, people who have an open throat, they tend to speak louder than other people because they feel they're not being heard, for instance. And besides these nine centers, let me share with you another thing. We also have the profiles. So we have 12 profiles and these are 
connected to the planets. You see here the pictograms for the planets. We have uh, the planets including the outer planets and also Earth. Uh, in human design, Earth is what makes a person grounded. And um, these numbers from 1 to 64, they pertain to the hexagrams in uh, I Ching. So if you know a bit of I Ching, it will be easier for you to follow along. If not, just uh, wait for the example. So there are 12 uh, profiles, 12 types of people that also connect to the types of um, centers that are defined in your chart. And then, just one second, I'm just going to show you the example of a cross. It's very important that some defined centers form a so-called incarnation cross. So for instance, here, here we see that the gates that are defined 10, 15, 25, and 46, they form a cross, yes? Because it's like a perpendicular, it's like the cross of matter, it's like the four cardinal points, and in the middle, it's the person. So uh, it is said in human design that um, these four gates that form the cross are 70% of your imprint and of your life purpose. And there are an 192 possible crosses. So quite a, a wide variety of uh, possibilities here in human design. Okay, and for the example today, I thought that we would look at the chart of a famous actor. Uh, this actor is called Rami Malek. He was, uh, he first became more famous because he's in the series, the US series, where he plays a very intelligent hacker. And um, now he is also becoming very famous because he plays the role of Freddie Mercury, the lead singer of Queen, in the recently premiered movie Bohemian Rhapsody. And it's really interesting because, um, you know, Freddie Mercury's chart is not really sure because his birth time is not really certain. But um, his uh, sun degree is uh, exactly conjunct with uh, Remy Malek's moon. And uh, the opposite, Remy Malek's uh, sun, is uh, opposite Freddie Mercury's moon. So there's a sun-moon connection between their charts. So if they knew each other, they would probably get along very well. <laughs> So it's really interesting how he chose to, to play this role. Uh, let me share his uh, chart. Can you see it? Yes, I can see it. Okay. <laughs> you know, okay. like, this is the first time I'm seeing all these diagrams, I think. Yes. <laughs> it's so amazing. It's... Yes, that's why I thought we would discuss and it today, because you I'm talk so much to... about, yeah? Sorry to interrupt you here. Yeah. Before you start, where, where did you learn all this? Well... Um, I have a friend whose boyfriend practices human design. He's a human design teacher. And I went to one of his classes some months ago. And I was like fascinated how it's uh, how it applies. And uh, then I also have two interviews on my channel with two human design specialists. And I was really like, I really wanted to integrate this new knowledge to um, help with my readings to bring a further layer of depth because it's quite i mean it's not so difficult and it's really insightful especially as i said to judge one's personality and to judge compatibility because compatibility is always very complex <laughs> and yeah. sometimes kuta is not enough <laughs> yeah that never happens <laughs> Yes, so but this is like amazing. I mean, if they would, this somebody else would be there and they would have this mind, you know, they would have patented, they would have put a patent maybe in this. <laughs> <laughs> and one yeah. last question uh, have yeah. you found anything of this sort? I mean, apart from all these which you're showing, like exactly mm -hmm. the human is have you seen any kind of similar reference in the astrology books or anything like that? I mean. Apart well, from drawing conclusions. Well, um, human design is something that is quite new because it's a new combination. It's a new combination of old things. So it's something new and old at the same time because 
if you remember the, the picture I showed, there's a circle with the hexagram, the 64 hexagrams, and in the middle here you see the planets. So I didn't read about this in any astrology books. There are books on human design, but the knowledge is pretty new. So it's just if you understand the elements from astrology, if you understand what the planets mean, and then if you read the I Ching and if you understand all those hexagrams, then you can piece it all together also yourself, you know? So if you have some knowledge of that, of course, it's very helpful. <laughs> Amazing. Fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> sure. Um, so here we see uh, Rami Malek. He's a profile for six. So this profile for six is also called an opportunistic role model. And um, opportunistic is not to be taken in a negative connotation. It's a person that really needs an entourage, the right entourage to get ahead in the world. And then he becomes a role model, an influencer. I've seen this profile in a lot of actors' charts. A lot of Hollywood has this 4-6 profile, like an opportunistic role model, because a lot of actors are called by directors, I mean, and friends and friends of friends. So it's a lot of networking there. And uh, Rami Malek is another um, category we can talk about, is the, the main categories in human design. There are four main categories. There are manifestors, generators, projectors, and reflectors. So he's a projector. That means he has um, a defined spleen here. And uh, he, he, as we can see, he also has an open identity center. So that's very good for an actor because he can empathize with his character and he can get into other people's identities easier. Um, the strategy for projectors, because they say in human design that every type has a, a strategy that makes them um, successful in the way that they are truly. And for projectors, they have to wait for the invitation. And it's really funny because um, uh, I was watching an interview with this actor and he said he was just at home and he received the call from the producer of the movie to be part of the movie. So he didn't audition or anything. He just wait. I mean, he was just there being receptive and he got the invitation. So it's very important for these projectors to wait for an, an invitation to something and not be pushy and try it themselves because that way they will just become bitter instead of becoming successful. And, um, so we're just going to go through some of these gates because uh, I'm just going to uh, tell you that here on the left we have the design and this is the chart of uh, the person uh, 88 days before their birth. So uh, Ra Hu, the person who brought this system into the world, he says that that is the time that the soul actually uh, embodies in the body. So that's why we look at the design. The design contains the unconscious patterns of the person. So it's things that other people can notice about you, but you don't really notice about yourself. And uh, here the numbers in black are the personality. This is uh, during a reading. These are the things that you clearly recognize about yourself and in yourself. And here, uh, these are the symbols for the planets. You can see here the nodes also. You can see the outer planets and the earth. As I was saying, this is what keeps a person grounded. So let's see a little what we are dealing with here. I don't know if you can see these numbers because they are rather small. Let me try to make it a little bigger. Um, do you see it okay, the numbers or so and so? <laughs> well, I'll just, I'm just gonna say what number it is, yes? So here on the top, we see number 64 and this is defined because we see a little black here. This is something the, the person is conscious of. So uh, in I Ching, the 64 is called the Wei Ji. It's the water coming down on fire. It's a, a new cycle in life. And um, in human design, it corresponds to the right hemisphere of the brain. 
it corresponds to ideas that come into chunks, that seems to come out of thin air, that come directly from the divine inspiration. Uh, but in order for the person to really uh, bring these ideas, to rationalize them, they need to associate themselves with a person who has this gate 47 uh, defined so that they form a channel. Otherwise, they just remain simple ideas and they don't really get rationalized. This is a gate of inspiration, of divine inspiration that cannot be forced. It's just something that flows from the divine and you can't really explain how it's coming. 